Hello students, welcome back to our session. When we went for break, I introduced the concept of extent of the market. The concept of the exit of the market simply means the size of the market. And when we look at the size of the market, we are more interested on uh, the number of customers for a particular commodity. The size of the market determined by the number of customers. When we have uh, a small number of customers, we have few buyers, we say that market is small. It's a narrow market. So when a market has a few buyers, a small number of customers, we say that market is small, the size of the market is narrow. But uh, when uh, the number of customers is large, we say the size of the market is wide. Now, after having seen this uh, little introduction of uh, what, deter what is the extent of the market, which uh, simply we need to know the size of the market, our interest is to know the determinants of the size of the market. To have a large market or a small market depends on a number of factors. One of the factors is uh, nature of the commodity. Nature of the commodity. Commodities which are durable and valuable have a large market. valuable and durable goods. Such as gold have a wide size of the market. A wide extent of the market. So this is one of the factors which determine the size or the extent of uh, the market. The second factor which determines the extent of the market is uh, political conditions. 
or what we say, political climate. <laughs> Presence of peace and security helps to increase the size of the market, while political instability limits the size of the market. political conditions. When there is peace, there is security. You find that trading activities will increase, will expand. Commodities will get more markets. But when there is political instability, wars hinder the extent of the market. Dear students, the third factor which uh, determine the extent of the market is uh, government policy. <laughs> government policies. We have the question of strict laws on uh, the use of certain products. Limit the size of the market. Sometimes the government, for certain reasons, may impose strict laws on the use, on consumption of certain commodities. Such laws reduce the number of customers and therefore leading to a small size of the market. Alongside this, we have the question of heavy taxes. Imposed on uh, certain commodities. Make them expensive, make them costly to make uh, consumers to afford leading to small size of the market. Another factor which may determine the size of the market is uh, provision of subsidies and provision of subsidies and reduction of taxes help to expand the size of the market for certain commodities. So these lead to expansion of the extent of the market. So the question of uh, government policies has uh, a very, very vital role in determining the size of the market. Another factor, my dear students, is uh, the question of infrastructures. Here I will be interested with the means of transport and communication. Where the means of transport and communication are well developed, communication and transport network is very wide. You find that commodities will get wider market size.
But when you have poor infrastructures, poor system of uh, transport and communication, lead to small size of the market. When the government is trying to improve infrastructures, the outcome is uh, expansion of the size of the market. And as we said previously, when the market expands, it stimulates production of uh, goods and services in various sectors. Another factor which determines the extent of the market is number of grades. Commodities which have got a large number of grades have a tendency of having a wider market because it will allow various customers with different, different abilities to purchase the commodities. Because normally, each grade will have its own price. So for higher grades, the customers will be high income earners. And for lower grades, the customers will be lo the low income earners. So a commodity which has got a large number of grades tends to have a large number of customers. And therefore, the market becomes wide. In addition, Another factor which determines the extent of the market is extent of demand. Extent of demand. Where the demand for a commodity is wide, the market tends to be wide. A wide extent of demand leads to a wide extent of the market. So basically, these are some of the factors which determine the extent of uh, the market. But this is not all. We have other points that we have to add. Well, students, we still go on discussing the factors which determine the extent of the market. Another factor which determines the extent of the market is banking and monetary system. Where there is uh, a stable banking and monetary system, the size of the market become wide. Instabilities in the monetary system make the currency of a country lose its value and people lose confidence on the use of it and therefore affecting the transactions and therefore making the market size to be small. So a stable banking and monetary system
help to expand the extent of the market. So basically, these are the factors which uh, determine the extent of uh, the market. Another thing that uh, I would like to wind up with as we conclude this topic is some concepts which are used in uh, the concept of a market. One is market price. Market price is uh, the equivalent price established by market forces of demand and supply. The price or equilibrium price established through interaction of demand and supply. The interaction of demand and supply forces lead to establishment of the equilibrium price and this is known as market price. We have another thing which is called market demand. Market demand is uh, like uh, the aggregate, the total demand for a commodity. The total or aggregate demand. for a commodity. The sum of demand for a commodity by all consumers. Normally, this is uh, taken as the summation of uh, individual demands. So you can say market demand equal to quantity demanded by the first customers, quantity demanded by the second customer, quantity demanded by the last customer. This is market demand. We have uh, another one which is uh, market sector of the economy. A market sector of the economy is an economy where everything that is being produced in the economy passes through the market. Implying that everything that is produced in uh, that particular economy is for the market, is bought and sold, is sent to a market to be purchased by customers. All outputs all goods and services which are produced in that particular economy are for the market. That is to be bought and sold. And uh, this is what is supposed to be in, an, uh, in a, a modern economy. Another concept is market of art. Market of art. Let's take uh, an example that uh, you want to purchase a car. You go to a showroom. You get 
a number of cars which are being disposed for sale, and you pick one of them, you buy that car from a known market, from a recognized market, but only to find that you have purchased a car which was a stolen car. That's called market overt. You have purchased a stolen commodity. That's called market of art. We have a market mechanism. Market mechanism, or sometimes this is called price mechanism. Market mechanism or price mechanism is a system whereby resources in the economy are allocated through market forces of demand and supply. It's a system whereby prices of the commodities, their movements determine what to be bought and sold in a market, determine what to be produced in a market. Price mechanism, a system where prices and resource allocation are determined by demand and supply forces. This is the equilibrium quantity, and this is the equilibrium price. So when I was talking of a market price, a price which is formed by demand and supply forces, but this system where prices and allocation of resources is made through forces of demand and supply is known as price mechanism. We have a market period. Period, sometimes this is known as very short run. Sometimes it is known as momentarily. This is a period of time when all factors are fixed. And therefore, output depends on the available stock. The period of time when all factors are fixed. Output depends on the available stock.
So, my dear students, these are some concepts which uh, you, you may come out with them, uh, uh, close with them. And uh, not only these, there are so many concepts which are related to this, this topic. So, you have to go through various literatures, through various textbooks to get wide knowledge of uh, this topic and related items. Dear students, after having seen uh, some concepts which are related with uh, the concept of a market, I would like to leave with you some questions to attempt. Questions. One, outline the features of oligopoly. Two, classify the following markets. A. Market for ice. B. A perfect market. C. Market for cleaners. D, market for beans, and E, monopoly. Question number three. Explain factors which determine the extent of the market. Number four. What are the functions of a market? And lastly, write short notes. on the following concepts. One, a local market. B, a market price. C, monopsony. E, a free market. And lastly, a sport market. So you attempt these questions, and uh, 
where you find some difficulties, you may consult your friend, go through the literatures, so as to get the answers for these questions. Dear students, we are through with this topic. Next time, we begin another new topic called the theory of the firm. In case you have any comments or you have questions, you may write SMS or through WhatsApp number 0769048594. I repeat, 0769048594. Or otherwise, for the same, you may subscribe through YouTube called Elimika or follow us through Instagram page called Elimika Darasa. Till next time, I wish you all the best and have a nice day. Thank you very much.